Hello again, everyone. Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks. And uh, this should be a really fun chapter. I get a lot of questions uh, about this aspect of RC submarine building, and that's the trimming aspect of it. Uh, setting up your boat so it floats properly when it's surfaced uh, and also when it is submerged. So I'm going to bring you through the process. So I'll show you how I did this particular boat. Uh, and you can apply this to almost any RC submarine that you have to play with. All right, so to uh, to get started here, I uh, just want to show you how I've got things set up. I got some uh, closed cell pink uh, construction foam, and I've got that embedded in the lower hull uh, through this entire nose section uh, and in beside the battery there. And the reason I did that is because this battery is heavy. Uh, we need to offset that weight, and so I've got fl flotation foam uh, in there. And really, that's the only purpose behind this is to offset the weight of the battery. Now you'll notice that uh, I also have some strips that run along the sides uh, here on both sides. Again giving just a little bit more flotation but really not a lot more in the lower hull. All the rest of it that I've uh, put in is in the upper hull. The one thing that uh, I really want you to notice is that I have not installed any of it above the water line of the boat. So that's very important. No foam as of yet above the water line of the boat. So this is installed in sections. I installed it with two-sided tape um, against the hull. It's in there very, very uh, securely. So if we um, put this down here and look down the hull, um, you can see none of that flotation foam is above the water line. So what I'm going to do uh, at this point, I have not put this in the water yet at all, so it's going to be uh, a complete exercise for you guys to follow. Uh, I'm going to bring some more foam out here. Uh, I'm also going to grab some weight and uh, we'll go through the process of trying to make this thing go. All right, as I mentioned, uh, this has not gone in the water yet, so it's gonna be as much of a surprise to me as it will be to you guys um, where this thing floats. I've got a strong suspicion it's gonna sink, uh, maybe particularly in the back end, uh, because I don't have a lot of foam back there, but uh, I do have extra foam over there, so we'll see what happens. So the water is entering the, the sub hull through those openings in the bottom that I showed you guys earlier. And surprisingly, it looks like it's almost bang on at the rear. Uh, and it's sitting about an inch and a half high in the front. So that's telling me I've got a lot of extra foam uh, up front that I don't need. So I got a couple of different uh, things that I can do. One, I can add weight um, to the bow, or I can take foam out of the bow, and uh, we can see what that does. But ideally, we want this thing to float uh, down here, right at this water line. So I'm gonna pull it back out, we'll open it up. I'm gonna remove some foam, looks like quite a bit of foam uh, from this front area, and then we'll go from there. All right, we've removed a bunch of flotation foam, uh, a long, two long strips uh, from the side of the hull here, uh, and then a bunch of foam that was wrapped around the, um, the battery there. So we'll see what that does to where it floats now. So that's better, but there's actually quite a bit of um, additional flotation that can be removed. 
right right here is where additional weight would need to be added <clears throat> and of course I could add that down very low in the hull which would give this model a lot of static stability um, but you always fight the battle um, where you don't want to have too much weight because it becomes ungainly to carry so what that basically means I'm going to be removing um, even more foam all right as you can see I've removed all of the flotation foam from the front of the um, battery compartment uh, area. Um, again, surprising uh, to me, but the, the thing you got to realize, this is a really massive cylinder. It's got a lot of reserve buoyancy in it. Uh, and I probably just didn't take that uh, into account enough when I put all the foam in. So all of that flotation foam is removed. You can see what I've removed from the model. Now I'm going to button it back up again, drop it in the water, and uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay, so you can see, even with all of the flotation removed from the bottom uh, of the hull, I'm floating probably about quarter to three-eighths of an inch high at the rear and about three-quarters of an inch high uh, at the front. So what this means is I'm going to need to um, add additional weight in the keel. All right, as you can see, um, I believe uh, we have achieved basically perfect surfaced waterline. Um, it runs just under this uh, demarcation uh, that we created in the hull. It's uh, nice and level, it's nice and stable. Uh, and basically what I did is I, I elected to use uh, just a Ziploc bag filled with these <clears throat> um, lead pellets. And I put that in underneath the watertight cylinder and then what I'll do is I'll adhere those into the hull with some resin uh, later once we're done here. But the challenge now that we have achieved uh, surface trim is to see what the model does when we fill up the ballast tank. Now I'm going to make an educated guess here um, that it is not going to submerge fully and um, we'll see. Uh, I've got uh, um, high hopes uh, that we'll get to just slight positive buoyancy which is where I want it to end up. Um, but if not, uh, the, the good news is we can fill the ballast tank, see where we're at, and then just add weight directly below the center line of the model until we get it perfectly where it's at. Empty the tank back up, and that will be the final water line of the model. So uh, I'm going to go grab the radio. We'll fill up the ballast tank and uh, see where we're at. All right, since I had it out here anyway, what I thought I would do is um, show you what the cylinder looks like in operation without the model kind of cluttering things up. So I've got it uh, tethered to the battery there. I got my transmitter on and we are going to activate the um, ballast system and we'll see how that works. So you can see the water getting forced into the um, ballast tank there. And the thing about this system that's really good is that when your battery system um, gets depleted, you lose you lose um, power to your pump, and it becomes harder and harder uh, for it to pressurize the uh, the cylinder there. So what that means is that when your uh, battery is depleted, you can't dive anymore, which is very, very safe. And it's also a very visual indicator of when it's time to bring the boat back in and uh, charge up your batteries. So looking inside there, you can see the water level's rising. There's a brass tab up at the top there. And when the water reaches it, it's actually going to automatically shut off the pump. There you go. So the tank is about three quarters full, you can see it's sitting much lower in the water and this is where we're going to be trimming the boat to. Okay, I got the ballast tank uh, partially flooded right there. I'm just going to continue, but you can see it's going down heavy by the bow there. When I continue, 
it continues that tendency. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue this um, until the boat gets all the way down. All right, so that is fully flooded right now. Kind of goofy looking. That's not exactly what we want, but the good news is, is it is a partially buoyant boat, which is uh, how I would recommend operating these boats. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of foam underneath the bow of the boat. Um, we're going to see if we can get it up to a uh, level trim and move forward from there. All right, so what we got here is an example of a slightly positively buoyant uh, model submarine. We got about two inches of sail uh, sticking out. Now this, in my mind, is uh, where you want to be from a safety perspective. So irregardless of what happens, you're going to have just a little bit of positive buoyancy to bring the model back up to the surface in case something happens. So. Um, underneath the bow, I've got a, a big strip of foam that is going to get installed above the water line. So that's only going to come into play when the model is diving. And then on the back, I've got just a little bit uh, more lead, and that is going to go <coughs> underneath the uh, keel. And that's what's going to make it sit at this attitude. All right, everyone, day two of uh, trimming, and as you can see, uh, we have a floating boat. Um, I'd say it's just a hair uh, low in the front, but it, it kind of settles back and forth. Realistically, um, well, you can see it leveled out there, but realistically speaking, you're, you're not going to sit a boat like this. It'll be operational. That's really where the, uh, the automatic pitch controller comes in. It uses those stern planes. Uh, to direct water flow over the control surfaces and keep it nice and level. So, uh, you know, this is how I would operate it in, um, I guess, what you would call submerged trim. Um, it will go down. It will it will do a full uh, static dive, and I'll try and get a bit more in there. There you go. Periscopes are going down there. You got really, really excellent control. Like if I, if I were to play with this, I could probably hover it within a quarter of an inch, I'm thinking. It's, it's a really, really good system. So let's bring it back up again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow the tanks with the pump. And again, this is going to take a little while. You know, that's a lot of water to, uh, to move out at high pressure. Surfacing on a perfectly level keel. We're getting close to the uh, surfaced water line. And there you go, there's some bubbles. It means that the pump is pulling air out of the ballast tank rather than water. That's it. Perfect surfaced trim, perfectly level at the perfect water line. Um, I am really excited about this uh, because what this means is we can now move on to uh, detailing this thing. We'll get her all painted up, uh, weather it up a little bit, make it look like the you know, old boat that it uh, is, but within reason. So thanks for joining me uh, yet again. Look for the next chapter of the build while we'll get into some cosmetic stuff uh, on the boat and uh, she should be almost ready to go. See you next time.